later this afternoon. One of my sons, Robert, and I will be climbing under this cabin to tackle a job that I think you might find interesting. We're going to be installing two different plumbing freeze proofing products by a Canadian company called Heatline. I've used different products of theirs before and have been very impressed with their engineering and quality, so I've turned to them again to help out with this you know, sticky and, and challenging situation. So we've got a two-part challenge here. We want to freeze-proof uh, some drain lines under this cabin, which is built without a basement. Uh, there's not enough soil here for a basement. And this first part of the installation uh, runs under the cabin. I've gone to a lot of trouble to make sure that the pipe is sloped consistently. And you can see those supports and the straps and things. Because if water doesn't lay in the pipe, it's probably not going to freeze and it's probably not going to clog up. But just in case, we want to install some heating cables under here. And that's what this project is about. We've started by putting some aluminum tape on the bottom of this 3-inch ABS drain pipe. The idea there is that it's going to help distribute the heat throughout the pipe a little bit better. We're going to put on a couple of runs of heating cable and fasten that down with some more aluminum tape and then encase the whole thing in some uh, foam pipe insulation. This is the first part of the installation. The second part will involve a 130 foot underground run to the septic tank. It's not very far underground though, it can't be because of the site conditions. So we're going to be putting a heating cable inside that part of the pipe and we'll show you about that later. This is the heating cable that we're going to be installing on the outside of the sewage pipe, uh, the, the part that's exposed and accessible. Um, it's from, it's that stuff from the, the heat line company I was telling you about. Paladin is what it's called and uh, it's self-regulating which means it adjusts its its heat output depending on the temperature of that part of the cable. Kind of an interesting thing. As you'll see we'll be hooking this up to a timer and the other part of the system to a thermostat but I wanted to give you a close look at this cable before we get into the cabin and start putting it on. So I'm peeling the backing off the aluminum tape here. And the idea is to, is, is to um, stick the tape to the cable first and then make the tape form around the cable as much as possible before it sticks to the pipe. That way you get better contact. So the cable's right underneath and then carefully sticking the tape to it. Now I'm going to kind of round my way down the sides of the cable. First one side and then the other. Trying to keep it away from the pipe as much as possible. There's more going on here with the pipe than in other places. We have some fittings to make little bulges too. But I'm just going to do the best I can to get the pipe in contact, the, the cable in contact with the pipe. It's not going to be perfect over all these fittings, but it'll be close. And then we're going to be putting insulation on top too, so that will help to contain everything. It's going to work just fine. There's there's a lot of heating power to this cable. I've used it before. So we've got the double run of heating cable taped down to the whole the whole length of the pipe, so back and forth, and it's plugged in, and it's heating now. It doesn't get really warm. Uh, you can feel a little bit of warmth, but not a whole lot. And we're just fitting this uh, pipe insulation on. Probably not absolutely necessary, but. Uh, it will help the cable to work more effectively 
if it is needed. And um, uh, also if we decide to leave the cable on uh, using a timer, give it a little shot of heat every so often to keep it clear, this pipe insulation is going to uh, reduce the, the heat consumption, the electricity consumption, consumption um, better, just to keep it more efficient. So here we are finished the first part of the installation. So this is the retro DWS heating cable that we're going to be putting in that long underground sewage run. That's, like I said before, 130 feet long. We had to go that long because we had to get that far away from the cabin in order to get enough slope for the sewage to run through. And there's not a lot of soil over the pipe, so we just want some sewage protection. Regulations prohibit the installation of a heating cable within a sewage pipe. I think it has to do with explosion hazards and things. But the heat line people have, have uh, cleverly got around that restriction by putting the heating cable inside of a pipe. And it's all sealed at both ends. So technically speaking, the heating cable is not, is not in the sewage line. Um, it's inside the pipe, which is inside the sewage line. So we're going to try stuffing this down. I've heard that this, this kind of product can be pushed down many hundreds of feet. I know of one particular application where the pipe was, this pipe was pushed down 400 feet, not fished down, but pushed from one end. And that's um, kind of like what we're going to be doing here. It's not going to be 400 feet. But, um, so first step is to undo it and to uncoil it. We don't want to start stuffing it down off the roll because that will impart a twist to this cable and we don't want any sort of a twist so uh, this is the part where this is a, a fitting that goes into a clean out that is at the beginning of the run and you'll see that when we get down there I'm just going to leave all this wrapped up because we have a plug-in and a GFCI protector here and everything but for now we're just going to roll this out flat on the ground and get ready to start feeding it in out of the cabin So this clean out and this pipe goes at about a 45 degree angle and then it connects with the horizontal run leading to the septic tank <clears throat> and that's where this uh, heating arrangement is going to go. So I'll just take the clean out off and start pushing this down. As far as we need it to go. We'll know when we get to the end and we'll be taking a look at the septic tank as well to see that that cable pokes through down at that end. So here we are at the sewage end. There's the white PVC T fitting that goes down into the sewage and that, that black end you see is the end of, of the uh, retro DWS cable. And it goes all the way, all the way over to that cabin there. It was very easy to push this, this heating product through the pipe. There was no hitches. It didn't buckle. Uh, now all we have to do is a brave person needs to, to bend that downwards because we have about a foot or so extra. We wanted it to go into the tank and, um, that's only our, so our next step before we fasten the other end and get it plugged in and heating. So this is one of two devices that can be used with the heating cable systems that you saw us install. Uh, this is a programmable thermostat. So this is a 20 something foot long probe. This end measures the temperature and uh, you can you can set that the minimum temperature with this unit here. It plugs into an outlet on this side and then you plug in the heating cable onto this side and when the temperature at the probe reaches some minimum level then this unit will will turn on and it will energize the cable until you reach a preset higher level. So you're really only using this when heat is actually needed on the pipe which is not all the time. 
This is another option for reducing the energy consumption of, of this kind of heating cable. Uh, and this is a timer. So it doesn't have a temperature probe, but this end plugs into an outlet, and then the heating cable plugs in here. And you can set the unit for uh, a cycle time of anywhere from 4 hours to 30 seconds. And within that cycle time, you can choose, as you can see, different percentages of time that the unit is on. So it's not exactly a thermostat. It's going to come on at a regular time, but only for a preset amount of time. So it, it also serves the purpose of reducing energy consumption, and you can adjust this depending on how cold it is.